Good morning, guys. We are just getting ready to start our day today. Uh, it is Monday morning. We are unloaded right now, so we are on our way down to West Point to go load up a load, and we are going to be taking that down to Orlando, Florida. So that'd be pretty cool. It's been a while since I've uh, taken a trip down in through Florida. So uh, yeah, we're going to run down there. We got two stops to make when we get down there at this point. Um, nice thing is here, they are constantly trying to make the load better. Drop my kids off at school. So in six and a half hours when we get down to West Point, possibly could have a single dropper or could be going someplace else where they got a backhaul, don't know. But uh, we're gonna be trying, we're gonna be hustling up this morning and uh, trying to get down there as quick as possible. Hopefully we don't get flooded out in this rain because it does look like we're gonna be driving in it all day long. I was hoping to be able to get the truck washed this morning but I'm not even gonna bother doing that because it looks like all the way down to West Point, it's gonna be raining until about the time I get there. It looks like by the time I get there, it'll be past West Point. But once I leave West Point, start heading south, it looks like I'm gonna be right back in the rain again. So it is what it is, but let's get on the road and I'll see you guys as we get down there. All right, our pre-trip is over. Just uh, clicked over our 15 minute pre-trip mark and we are getting on the road. Turn around, we got uh, 357 miles to go until we get to uh, West Point, Georgia. And uh, we're gonna try to get down there as quick as possible. You can see it is raining out and uh, it's gonna be a dreary day on the way down there, but it is what it is. We'll stay nice and dry in here, keep the heat on, make it nice and warm. I guess, uh, I will say, did bring a lot of shorts for Florida because apparently tomorrow it's supposed to be 85 degrees down there. So we are going to try to get in there early so that way we can get unloaded or get the heck out of Dodge and not have to worry about uh, dying of heat down there because it's been a bit of a chilly winter and as you guys have seen we've been doing a lot of running up north the last few weeks so this will be a decent change and hopefully uh, it'll have some nice warm weather down there we won't get too overly fried in the sun but if we do we do it's uh, uh, as as we get closer to uh, as we get closer to the springtime here, hopefully it'll start warming up here in Tennessee and we'll start seeing a lot more of the uh, 50s and 60s during the day. So let's head on down. Uh, we got the scale house here about 10 miles ahead of me. So we'll roll into that in just a couple minutes and uh, hopefully just keep right on rolling. Keep on uh, making our way down to West Point. So I'll see you guys as we get a little closer. Good evening, guys. Just made it down here to Lake something, Florida. Um, I didn't really check what the uh, GPS said when I was getting down here, but we're at the Loves down here, uh, just just above the uh, just above the Scale House here in Florida on I-75. Just doing my check, kind of. Well, this is the load that we have on. Nice, easy load, but I just wanted to walk through and check quick, check all my uh, straps, make sure nothing fell off. Just kind of that one last look through before going to bed for the night. But uh, that was a nice, easy load. It is also beautiful down here. We are, uh, it's about 70 degrees out. So gonna shut the truck off tonight. Let the, uh, leave the windows down a little bit. Let the cool breeze just kind of fill the truck and have a good evening. But we got, I want to say like 100, 120 or so miles until we get this load delivered tomorrow. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off here tonight and we will uh, get up early in the morning and go ahead and get this thing, get these over to Orlando, Florida area, get everything delivered and keep on going. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Let's uh, try to stay busy this week. See how this week's gonna go. First time down here with Waddle. So, fingers crossed, it ends up being a good week. So, I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning, guys. Just got done uh, doing my pre-trip. Gonna wander inside real quick, go grab a 
cup of coffee, get our day started. It's uh, like 6.45 in the morning, so sun's just starting to come out. It's going to be a good day. It's already 63 degrees, so I think if I remember correctly, it's going to be 85 today. Hopefully, we're going to be out here before it gets up to that, but uh, yeah, we're going to try to get this done, get this accomplished as quick as possible, so uh, I'll see you guys on the road. Uh, what's going on, guys? We're rolling through uh, some traffic here cutting through uh, 301 on, uh, I think it's 301 here in, just outside of Orlando, heading up to uh, State Route 471, hopefully get up here shortly and get these things delivered, been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful morning, um, 63 degrees right the second, so I'm loving it. I don't get down here to Florida as often as I'd like to. Um, this is, I, I, I've always enjoyed Florida almost as much. Well, I will say I enjoy Florida more than I enjoy running Texas, but those are two of my, my favorite states to, uh, to drive through, which also coincides with two of the worst states for finding loads back out of. But uh, I love these trees right here that uh, we're going under right now gonna I, I love seeing them um i don't exactly know what they are i think they're like a live oak but i just i love seeing the spanish moss hanging from them. i think it's just beautiful i don't know people that live down here if they like it or not um i don't know if the spanish moss destroys the trees like uh oh i forget the name of the type of vine that we have up in uh Tennessee that that literally just takes over forests but uh, I love seeing this stuff the only thing is I'm not a giant fan of driving underneath them uh, you hear that right there I was dropping my suspension anytime it looks like the tree is gonna be slightly close I just go ahead and drop my suspension get a couple inches of extra clearance because most of these trees are definitely going to be cut to about 13.6 for all your box trucks and stuff like that that roll through these roads. But depending on if your uh, if your height stick was off just a hair, like you had it leaned one way or another, or you're in a little bit of a low spot, you're uh, you could definitely be a little tall, 13.7, 13.7 and a half, and you're hitting tree limbs. My wife's calling, so I'll catch you guys in a minute. Alrighty, just called this dealership that we're delivering to. Um, looked on the map earlier. That's got they got two entrances into their dealership, but looking at it, the one right up close to the dealership um, looks like it's a little bit more tricky, and but the other one looks like they got a whole ton of islands to have to try to get turned around near. So I called to find out which uh, which one of those two entrances I should pull into. Um, I did say actually the, the one that looks like it's going to be uh, more tricky. But uh, they said that, that's where everybody goes. So I'm assuming it's not as bad as it looks on the map. But uh, always make those phone calls, especially if you've never been to a dealership. Uh, I always try to call about 10, 15 minutes out if uh, if I've never been there, just to just to get a rough idea. Even if there, even if the instructions, like, like Waddle here, is very good at putting the instructions for how to deliver to each dealership on it, but I still always call and double check just in case they're doing construction on the dealership, something happened. Um, I, I just double check and verify that way you don't pull in and get yourself in a bind and then uh one you're not making them mad because we, we've all been to dealerships before where you pull in and you follow the instructions that are that are listed on the actual dispatch sheet but then the guy comes out go, doing the whole you know i've told you i guess that guy didn't have the patience to uh wait um and this guy i don't know keep going you don't have to pull over for me. I ain't going to pass you on a double solid. Um, anyways, but uh, we always, we've all had that guy where it's like, I've told them dozens and dozens of times not to, uh, 
not to come in this way, blah, blah, blah. And, and yeah, it's just not worth, not worth the hassle. So I just figure, you know what? It is much easier to call and get it worked out than it is trying to, uh, yeah, just, we, we've all had that guy that says, I've told you to put those vehicles over there. I, I've called a hundred times. They're not switching. Look, I've, I've never had that issue here, um, but I have had that issue in my 15 years of hauling cars. I've had it at least probably 50 to 100 times. So it's always better to call. And then if you do end up going into a place and, and you went to the wrong location because stuff wasn't updated, just always be, it, it's much easier just to be apologetic. And, and what I've always found is I, I'm like, look, sir, I, I might be in the wrong spot, but uh, I, I got just a couple more to get off. Let me get them off and then we'll just shuttle each other back and forth. We'll get all the cars moved to where you want them real quick, take five minutes. I, I apologize for that. As soon as I leave here, I will call and try to get that fixed for you. I'm sorry. And and I've always noticed that, that that really settles a lot of people down if they're having major issues. So I'll catch you guys in a couple. All right, so we just got here to the Kia dealership. Pretty, like I said, it's a pretty big lot. Definitely uh, didn't expect it to be this large. But uh, they did tell me to pull out back here to get offloaded. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and line up all my cars right here. Um, I'm going to have to unload all nine. Because two of these Sportages go to my other dealership. And I had to kind of place them every which way on the trailer. So I'm going to end up double checking all my VINs. Make sure that I'm dropping the right ones here. But uh, as you can tell, it was a pretty easy load. Put two of the Tellurides up here so I didn't have to worry about them on the shorter trailer. Put the uh, Sportage under here. I can get a Telluride down over a Sorento, but uh, if I had the Sportages, I might as well use them, make it even easier, build myself extra space on both ends. The whole rest of the load is pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple to put on. Um, did Sportage, Sportage. I like putting them right up here because one, lower roof on this spot so it gets on the height easier but two they're both shorter front to back so it allows me to have more turning room right here and you can tell i leave myself plenty of room here same thing back here actually this one's got a half a mile of room between these two i'm actually going to try on one of these loads putting three sorrentos on the top up there i'm pretty sure it'll work i think this might actually be just a hair shorter than the previous ones I don't know, um, could look it up, but I'm just not going to. But either way, I'm gonna set you guys up, get these things offloaded quick, and uh, let's go ahead and try to uh, get out of here as quick as we can. So I'll let you guys watch. I think I'm just gonna play this one full, uh, full out, let you guys watch the whole process. So uh, if you like it, let me know. Like, uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you can. And uh, if you like this kind of video where it's just gonna be a full-on offloading video I will go ahead and do more of these so let me know in the comments below what you think of it alrighty there you go hopefully you guys can see this but we're gonna go ahead and offload every single one of these units because the Telluride up there on number one has to go here so might as well just start and offload them all instead of having to uh, Try to leave like this one right here this one's actually one of the surrenders that goes to orlando i could technically leave it on and offload above it but two things one it's against swaddle rules to uh leave number two up in the air to offload so we're not going to do that and two for the little bit of time that it's going to save i don't like risking that much it's just not worth it so i'll just go ahead offload it takes maybe a minute and a half total to offload this unit and reload it whereas sitting in a hospital or with a cast 
because you broke something for five or six months takes a lot longer to heal than that minute is to just do it the right way. So that is why we will be offloading this unit and uh, not worrying about, uh, what's it called? Not worrying about leaving it on just to save a minute and a half. So don't worry, I did not forget to pin the other side of the truck. I will be doing that in just a second. I do this all in a pattern. So uh, as I get over to that side, I will pin that side and make sure all of this is done safely without any hiccups. So obviously we forget sometimes to do things, but uh, we try our best here. Go ahead, raise this unit up. Raise that tell you ride up. There we go. Now we can offload all of those. Get this pinned and start unstrapping. So as you guys can see, the, this is also the pattern I use when unstrapping all these units. Oh. Use the same one all the time. You never forget anything. So other thing is if someone walks out, starts distracting you, always double check your work when you're done because they get you out of your pattern that's when you forget to do something and cause damages you could forget to pin a deck and total a unit out it's just not worth it to spend that one and a half extra minutes to just double check the load before you leave out if someone has gotten you out of your rhythm it's just easier to do that than have to make that phone call or pay out the insurance claim or out of pocket for a five, ten thousand dollar roof repair on something. Just don't make those mistakes. And I'm sure at this point, almost all of you have seen that video of that ambulance falling off the back of that, uh, uh, what was it called? I apologize for that. I don't know how much of that you guys got to see or hear because the wind knocked you guys over and knocked out my uh, my microphone thing. So I guess I'm going to restate half of this. But uh, yeah, we're going to, uh, if, if we get a chance, my, my next load is over to uh, Brunswick. If we get over there early enough, I'd love to uh, drop my trailer, take the truck down into Jekyll Island. It's like, I don't know, I think it's like 15 bucks to drive out there. I used to do it at my Western Star um, all the time. If we can, I'd like to run out there and uh, do a little fishing. I'll take you guys with me for that. Also, if, if we start running Florida a lot more, I will go ahead and try to get some loads over to Jekyll, or over to uh, Tampa, because you can park right at the end of the Skyway Pier and the Skyway Bridge over there and do some fishing off that pier and over the years I have done that dozens and dozens and dozens of times I love fishing over there but if you guys are into fishing I would love to take you guys with me to do some fishing that would be fun and uh, like I said fishing's a giant passion of mine I do it all the time I got my fishing rod with me right now in the truck so 
fingers crossed, we'll get to do a little. If not, then we'll do it here in a couple weeks, couple months. At some point, I will have the opportunity to do it. But uh, got everything um, all un unstrapped. I throw all my pins while I'm unstrapping as I go around the truck and uh, go ahead, get all these offloaded as quick as we can. Um, these are all going into, uh, mo most of these are going here. I think seven of the nine are going to this dealership. So we'll go ahead and throw them Hopefully when I pull over here, you guys can still hear it. And we'll go ahead and stack them all up over here and then find someone. Come on, volume, turn down. Sorry about that. And then we'll go ahead and find someone to check these all in and get everything signed for. But... Huh. Now is just the process of trying to get this done. I'm hoping to have this done in, I don't know if I've already, if you guys, but look, I've already said this, but I don't know if it came through before the uh, camera fell over. But uh, I'm gonna try to get this all done in 45 minutes or so. Hopefully uh, it comes off well for you guys and or ho hopefully this all comes off well and I can get this done in the next 45 minutes of getting these things offloaded and the two put back on. Watch our mirrors. And as you guys know already, I unload and load via my mirrors. So I will, uh, I watch as I'm coming off these things. Make sure my mirror is not going to hit the side rail and then just back on off but I have always been a mirror guy if I stick my head out the window I'm not going to uh, get off these trailers straight so you got to bear with me on that I've always I've used my mirrors my entire career I find that easier um, I know some people don't like it and I've been told before that I need to stop doing it. But in my opinion, if I'm doing something safely and not causing damages, changing up my routine is going to make it so that I might cause damages or it's not as safe for me, then there's just certain things I will balk at. And me, sticking my head out the window to load and unload is going to be one of those things that if it comes down to me losing my job over uh, using my mirrors not sticking my head out I guess I will figure out how to uh, stick my head out the window but at the end of the day I will fight tooth and nail about being able to offload using my mirrors because like I said for me, that is more comfortable, which therefore makes it easier, which therefore makes it safer. And safety and not doing damages is the name of the game. And I will fight, like I said, tooth and nail that you are going to make it more likely for me to cause damages if, uh, if I'm sticking my head out the window. So I'll fight that one. But no, they, they've never said anything here about that but i have i was told a few times i've been told a few times at my previous employer that they don't like people using their mirrors they want you using sticking your head out the window i just can't and i'm not going to so if my, my opinion if i can offload the unit without damaging it then why does it matter at the end of the day and I've used my mirrors 
on everything from high rails to these quick loaders to low rail stackers, mid rails, the whole nine yards. So I will keep doing it. But it does look like someone came out here to start inspecting the vehicles, which is nice. Because now I don't have to go try to find someone and uh, it'll make my job a little bit quicker. Now, this one right here, I'll leave this driver's side front tire still strapped because these ratchets go under the tire and right, under the flipper here. So I have to leave it up in order to get the uh, straps out. So what I do, my pattern with this one is I go ahead and leave that uh, front tire strapped on and I will unstrap tires and then I leave it up to get that off unstrap the all the rest of the cars on the top deck drop it down and then unstrap that front tire just I don't think it'll ever happen but I'll go ahead and leave it strapped just so that in case the thing ever does decide to move if you're on ice or anything and it wants to slide it's not going to slide off the trailer and drop down destroying the undercarriage of that car so I find it easier to go ahead unstrap that uh or unstrap everything but that front tire leave that one on everything stays on the trailer without damaging anything again the name of the game no damages so oh. so now I walk back over here drop that car down now I'll walk back unstrap that front tire everything's nice and safe no issues I drop my tie down bar right here on that ratchet Walk back here and get my keys. Next car down. While I'm doing this, like I said, because I have to swap cars around, um, I'm checking all my vans. I know, so this one goes to Claremont. I know that my next delivery is two Sportages, but uh, I find it much easier to just go ahead, check all your vins anyways, because we've all done it over the years. You've done this long enough, and you thought you were dropping something, you end up dropping something else, and you leave the wrong car at the wrong dealership and then you have to go back and fix it. So found it easier, just every unit you pull off, check your VIN. So now definitely one of these next two will end up staying here. So I will park them because they are getting one Sportage here. But one of these two Sportages are going to be staying here at, uh, at Claremont. So let's figure out. This one's the Claremont. So the next one is definitely the Orlando car. right here and the next two should be for Orlando I will park them behind this row of cars that I'm offloading right now that way none of them get mixed up but again like I said we'll go ahead and check our VINs make sure we're not gonna be dropping the wrong car So this one should definitely say Orlando. 
I'll climb up here. And Greenway Kia of Orlando. So this one stays back, does not come, or comes off the trailer here, but has to go back on. So we will go ahead and park this one off to the side. Now the other thing you're gonna see here in just a second on the 75 footers is I now need to slide my fifth wheel. Uh, you didn't turn off, turn off. Um, so now we get to climb back into the truck and slide this fifth wheel. So that way we can uh, make it to uh, the trailer. Otherwise, we don't have enough space here. So, make sure your trailer brakes are locked. And hopefully, this unpins here. Make sure. Okay, make sure your trailer brakes are locked. And there we go. Slide backwards so you feel the bump. Close our fifth wheel back up, put our PTO back in, and now we can make it to the trailer. How you doing? This one stays here, this one goes to Orlando, or this one goes to Orlando, so I just had to get it off the next, I'll park the next two. Well, this one and that one back here, because they gotta go back to Orlando, but the other ones I'll just keep okay. lining up for you. So how many total are you dropping off? Seven for Seven, you guys. Okay. Yeah, you guys get the neck, these two up here. I just had to get just the way this trailer yeah. has to load. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I got myself slightly confused on that one. Um, thinking about too many things at once. Uh, that's why I will tell you, normally when I'm loading and unloading, I like to throw an earbud in and listen to a podcast. Um, just kind of get into your own little world and keep the distractions at the bare minimum. That way, uh, like I was just doing right there. Uh, I misspoke just because I was uh, thinking too many steps ahead at the time. Shh, trailer. <laughs> I was trying to think too many steps ahead of where I was already and uh, just got myself slightly misspeaking there. But uh, yeah, go ahead and like I just said, keep your distractions to a bare minimum it will keep your life a lot easier now this little fish thing right here I go ahead and leave on the side of the trailer once I'm done offloading that way it's right there for the next time I need it the vent on this one said Orlando too so this goes with me to my next dealership. And I'll end up just probably throwing these two cars back on the uh, I'll just end up throw both of them right onto the trailer itself and take them back over there or take them over to Orlando with me. But walk down here, grab our gloves and then pull our pins, drop number two all the way down. Like I've said before with these, um, always one, it, it's, waddles rule but two like i said earlier always drop this all the way down it's not worth um 
offloading while it's still up in the air for the, or offloading or loading while it's up in the air for that half a minute it's gonna save you. It's, uh, it's not worth the risk. You're better off just drop it down. You can see right here, walking around the trailer, cost me what, 15, 20 seconds. Start a timer right here. We'll see how long this actually takes to literally, like I said, just drop it all the way down, be safe. There's no reason to risk your life or limbs or and there's no point in getting injured to say it's a minute and a half i mean this car is almost all the way back uh, this car is almost all the way down now and uh well, what did it do it cost me at this point 45 seconds maybe one minute total so to raise it back up it's going to be what another 45 seconds to a minute it's just i don't i don't understand that risk the reward is just not enough for the amount of risk that you're taking unloading it up there and i know that most of us if we came from uh, chain trailers offloaded with that up in the air all the time and loaded offloaded left that up because you had to climb underneath it to get your chains out and uh takes a little bit of getting used to but man after literally 10 12 loads dropping it down you don't even think about it anymore now i will say with this deck right here i have not unstrapped the passenger side of the uh or the driver side of this car yet so what I'm gonna do, I set the deck onto deck number two, and then I raise it up right there, just, just a half inch. It's just enough that uh, it will go ahead and allow me to get the strap out from underneath the uh, deck number four, but it's uh, close enough that even offloading K5s or even like Nissan 350Zs or anything like that, you're not, you're not gonna drag the bumper. You have nothing to worry about there. So, you just go ahead, get that strap out of the way. Do this strap, get this strap out of the way. I go ahead and leave my load bar right here in this ratchet. And, cause now I climb up and I can leave my gloves right here. Same thing. Double check, yeah, this says Claremont. So this one goes here. We will go ahead, offload this one. But now when I come back, I will just go ahead and walk straight over to this side. I do not want that passenger side mirror going out. Um, I'll just walk back over to this side for two reasons, one, Got to get my gloves and load bar to undo number one. But two, I also have to put those wheel pockets back up. Um, yes, I know you can drive across it with a Telluride and you're not going to bottom out. But I will just go ahead and say at some point you may forget to leave that... Uh, or you may forget to close those pockets and you go flying off your trailer, not paying attention. It's dark or it's raining and you're just kind of out of your groove. You fly up there, backing onto number one and you go dropping a K5 into that pocket. You're gonna do some damage and have a freaking field day trying to, uh, trying to get that car out of those, uh, out of those spots. So what I do, I just go ahead lift my lift the pocket right there there we go undid the back of the, uh, the front of that car out of the back get myself some extra strap reset my pin same thing right here 
undo it, give myself some extra strap, reset the pin. This one, undone, same thing, reach in here, reset my, uh, go ahead, reset my pockets. Now I will raise number four all the way up. For me, what I have found is once it is just above, if you look right here, the bottom rail right here, just above the top of that rail, seems to be the right angle of attack. So now set your timer again. It's gonna cost about a minute to get this one all the way up. So like I said, just easier, go ahead and uh, drop this all the way down. But I'll raise the front of this all the way up to where it's matching up to deck number one. And then I will go ahead, raise the back up to where it just touches the uh, trailer, deck number four, and we will be out of here. So there we go, we are at deck number one. Raise the back end all the way up to deck number four. And then we are just about done. Just touching, re-level, re-level. Lift up that front deck just a little bit. Climb up here and we will unstrap. So this one, pull your strap, set it on the deck. And then I go to the passenger side or the driver's side of the truck. Unstrap, set it on the deck. Oh, front of deck number one, pull it out, squat down right here. I always leave my hand on the door handle. Um, just, just in case you start to lose your balance a little bit, you got a hold of something. So back over here to the driver's side of this car. I always leave my hand on the top of the car as I come across. Same thing right here. Squat down on the strap. Take my strap. I will say I'm always holding on to something while I'm up here. So better than slipping, falling, having a mistake. So toss my gloves back down to the ground and we are just about done here. Now I always raise deck number one up just a little bit because um, getting out of the pockets makes it a little bit easier. So that's why I do that. That way you're not spinning the tires, not having to rock the car. You can just go ahead, pop up out of those pockets real easy and you're done. So, gonna give this guy a second to inspect these. You need a minute to look these over? No. Okay, let me grab I'm my. Doing it as you... Oh, okay. Let me grab my phone. I don't want to rush you, so. <laughs> All right. Get these things signed for real quick. Then we'll put those two uh, sportages back on the trailer. Alrighty, so we should be here in three tenths of a mile. It says, uh, uh, it says the parking lot is on my right, but the paperwork says to unload at the used car lot. Let's see where I'm coming from. Okay, so it's gonna be on my left. It says unloaded the used car lot on Ferguson. So it looks like we'll be driving right past it. It'll be on our right hand side. Make a left onto Ferguson and pull into that. Looks like a big kind of a wide open parking lot that we'll pull into. So shouldn't be too hard of an unload. Like, well, you guys saw it. It's just uh, those last two that I got to get off over here and then head on up to Birmingham or Brunswick to go get our next load on. So, 
We have to get over one lane to the left. As soon as, so right now what I'm doing is I'm watching my mirrors for an opening. Turn my blinker off for a second and then I'll turn it back on. And it looks like, perfect. Nice big opening right here. So I'm guessing that just beyond the street light right here is gonna be Ferguson and uh, We'll pull on to that. So we got two tenths of a mile. We're looking out for the Kia dealership. Or we might be turning at, yeah. We'll be turning at the street light, not, uh, not um, beyond it. So, huh. Guess they want us delivering to the deal in time uh, dealership. That'll work. We'll pull in here and get offloaded. Alrighty, we are on the road on our way up to Brunswick. Sorry about that, I had to adjust my seat. Uh, on our way up to Brunswick, we are going to be uh, grabbing a load over towards Riverdale, uh, which is the side of Atlanta, back down towards uh, uh, West Point. So. <clears throat> We got a little over, what do we got? 196 miles to go. We'll be up there in uh, in Brunswick in just a short couple hours. Looks like, well, my GPS says at 348, it is 12.45. So literally in about three hours, we'll be, we'll be up there getting loaded up. Still have six hours and 43 minutes of drive time left. So fingers crossed. We'll be able to get that on and uh, and start making our way over towards Riverdale tonight. Get a few hours down the road. I haven't looked yet at how sporadic the load is over there in Brunswick. And I don't know if it's on the port side or if it's on the off port side yet. Um, we'll find out here shortly. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, we'll get on up there, get in there, get uh, get all loaded up, figure out where everything is, and, uh, and it shouldn't be a bad load. It looks like it's all small stuff for the most part. I took a real quick glance there. It looks like a whole bunch of Elantras, which are the small little Hyundais that they make. So that'll be nice and easy. Won't have to put much thought into loading it. Just kind of uh, throw them on and get them going. We got one Genesis that is going, same dealership in Riverdale. Um, the Hyundai and Genesis dealers, the exact same location. So that won't be bad. We'll just drop that, drop them off at the same place. And then that Melton or whatever it is, uh, one, that's just a single unit. So uh, we'll run over, get that dropped and uh, get back down to West Point. The goal is going to be probably to make another trip down here through Florida this week. Um, back up through Brunswick and then get something heading probably out towards Philly or uh, or up towards Chicago to finish out the week and make our trip back towards the house. So, so far it's turning out pretty well. Very happy with the week. It's, it's, uh, it's Tuesday at noon and already got our first load on the ground. So pretty stacked or pretty, so pretty stoked about that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys as we get up towards uh, Brunswick. Let's go get some, uh, we'll get some miles under our belt here. Alrighty guys, we just finished loading up here in Brunswick. We are on our way out to, uh, uh Riverdale and uh, I'm trying to remember what the other one was. Either way, we're heading out to the other side of Atlanta to go drop off our uh take this load to. So we are going to hustle and try to get as far across tonight as we can. Still have about two hours and fifty minutes of drive time. So we are going to try to get this done here. Let's see. Uh, I'm just throwing it into the GPS. But it's about a six, 
it was like five and a half, six hour drive across to get to uh, to get to Riverdale. So that is our first drop. That is actually getting 90% of the load. Um, I got eight to Riverdale and one to the other place, which is just north of Riverdale, not by much. So we will go ahead and uh, get over to Riverdale, get the eight units dropped, get over to the other dealership, drop the one, nice and simple. And then we'll be heading back over to West Point. My plan is to try to get into West Point tomorrow, get, phone's ringing, uh, get into West Point tomorrow, try to uh, get loaded and get back down into Florida uh, tomorrow evening. If I can do that, then I have set my week up very well and uh, we will be able to make that turn, get back up here to Brunswick, hopefully get another load back over to um, West Point. Get that one dropped probably Thursday night. Today's only Tuesday. So probably Thursday night, uh, Friday morning. Get that delivered, get over, grab our West Point load on Friday, probably up towards Philly, and go ahead and uh, call it a week heading back towards the house. So. I'm going to get some miles done, guys. I will see you uh, when I get parked tonight. I will show you what this load looks like. So I'll see you guys when we get over there.